Today, let us look at how to write ionic equations. Before this lesson, you should know the following things. The chemical formula of ions, how to write a balanced chemical equation, the solubility of different salts, and finally, the state symbols and what they mean. If you are unsure of any of the following items, please go back and revisit these topics before watching the video. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to write a balanced ionic equation. Now let us look at a very simple example. The reaction of dilute sodium hydroxide with dilute hydrochloric acid. The first step is to convert the word equation into a chemical equation. So let us replace the chemicals with their chemical formula. The first step is to check if the equation is balanced and then we will add state symbols if necessary. Note that the terms dilute gives us a hint that the solution is an equal solution. And we also know that the salt form sodium chloride is a soluble salt based on our solubility table so we will put that as aqueous. And for water it is given liquid. The next step is to look for any uh, items with aqueous and we will split them into the ions. So for sodium hydroxide, it dissociates to form sodium ions and hydroxide ions. Same goes for hydrochloric acid, it undergoes dissociation to form hydrogen ions and chloride ions. On the other side, sodium chloride is aqueous, so we'll split it up into the ions as well. And anything else that is not aqueous, we'll leave it. Now let us compare the left hand side and the right hand side. We find that items that are the same on both sides, we can cancel it and we are left with this. These are called spectator ions and they are not involved in the chemical reaction. They just remain in solution. So the last step is to copy out whatever that is remaining into the final ionic equation. Let's try another example. The reaction of zinc with dilute hydrochloric acid. If you have studied the chapter on acids and bases, you would know what the products are. Otherwise, the products will be given in the question. When zinc reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid, it forms a salt zinc chloride and hydrogen gas is evolved. Let us change the words into the chemical formula first. Before you can actually write this equation, you should know the chemical formula for zinc chloride and it's made up of the zinc 2 plus ions and the chloride ions. Let's check if the equation is balanced. And once the equation is balanced, let's add in the state symbols. Since zinc is a solid, it's a metal, so it's given the state symbols as dilute hydrochloric acid will be given AQ. And we know that zinc chloride is a soluble salt. So let's put AQ here. And finally, hydrogen gas will bubble off and therefore it's a gas. When we are done, let's look for the items with aqueous and we will split it up into the ions. So we will keep zinc because it's solid. Now, for hydrochloric acid, there is H plus and Cl minus. Note that because of the coefficient 2, we have to apply 2 to both of it. 
Same goes for the product because it's aqueous, let's split it up into the ions. This time round, zinc chloride is actually zinc 2 plus and there are two chloride ions. Since this is a gas, we'll keep it. Now again, we compare the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the equation. We find that chloride ions are the spectator ions. They are found on both sides. Let's cancel them. Now we can copy out everything that we have left to get the ionic equation. Let's try another example. This time, since you know the steps already, please follow me and try this equation on a separate piece of paper as well. We have dilute sulfuric acid and magnesium carbonate. Let's write the chemical formula first. And we know magnesium carbonate is MgCO3. Okay, since this is an acid carbonate reaction, it will give magnesium sulfate, carbon dioxide gas, and water. Let's put in the state symbols. Dilute sulfuric acid, AQ. Magnesium carbonate is an insoluble salt. All sulfates are soluble except barium sulfate and lead 2 sulfate. So this is AQ. Carbon dioxide is a gas and water is a liquid. Having done that, we'll do the same thing to split it up into the ions. Note that for sulfuric acid, it will give us two hydrogen ions and one sulfate ion per molecule. Magnesium carbonate is a solid, we'll keep that. We'll split up magnesium sulfate because it's an aqueous compound. Now let's compare both sides and we find that sulfate is repeating. Let's cancel that and we'll write out our final ionic equation. For the next example, do pause the video if you are confident and attempt this question before continuing. In the reaction between dilute sodium hydroxide and ammonium chloride, this is how we will write the reaction. Given that this is dilute and this is a solution, we know that both are aqueous. So let us uh, change the words into chemical formula first. If you had studied the chapter on acids and bases, you'll know that alkalis such as sodium hydroxide react with ammonium salts like ammonium chloride to give off a salt, ammonia gas, and water. Once done, again we look for compounds with aqueous and we'll split it up into the ions. For sodium hydroxide, that is the usual. Okay, because this is ammonium chloride, the cation is the ammonium ion, which is NH4 plus, and the N ion will be the chloride ion.
Okay, for the rest, since it's a gas, this is a liquid, we will keep it. Now let's compare the left side and the right side. This is the same. This is the same. We will cancel it. And this is what we are left with. In the final example, let us look at the reaction of sodium hydroxide with iron 2 sulfate solution. Alkalis can react with a solution of a metal salt to give its metal hydroxide. Let's write out the equation first. So we'll change sodium hydroxide to its chemical formula. And iron 2 sulfate, because it's iron 2, we know it is Fe2 plus ion and sulfate is SO4 2 minus. Therefore, the chemical formula of iron 2 sulfate is FeSO4. We know that sodium hydroxide is soluble, and we also know that iron 2 sulfate is soluble. Imagine in the beaker, we are having Na plus ions. We have OH minus ions. We have Fe2 plus ions and the sulfate ions. This is what is contained inside the beaker. As long as any pair of ion can form an insoluble salt, precipitation will occur. So in this case, iron 2 can form a precipitate with hydroxide ions. And that precipitate is iron 2 hydroxide. Since it's Fe2+, plus, I will need 2OH- to form a neutral compound. Whatever that is left is actually sodium sulfate. Let's erase this first. And the first step is to balance the equation. Once the equation is balanced, we look for the compounds with aqueous and we'll split it up into the ions. Here we have 2 sodium, 2 hydroxide. So 2 sodium, 2 hydroxide, iron 2, sulfate. Because this is a solid, we'll just copy it down. Sodium sulfate, there are two sodium here. So 2 Na plus plus SO4 2 minus. Let's cancel the spectator ions. And write the final ionic equation.